And so they're celebrated in certain circles. Oh, they made eight figures, but they were scamming people. Yeah. And they're now in jail and they wow. were literally paraded across the stage, right? There's a higher bar. And now that I'm saying this, this is the first time we've talked about this everywhere publicly, I'm going to get people who are going to rip off my content and compete with me on Amazon. And so it's that, that shift from what's the thing I can go, you know, copy paste and make money. What's my get rich quick scheme. Then that shift over to like, okay, I'm just going to go be of service to this audience of people. Hi, and welcome to the online performance podcast. My name is Jason Mills. This is the podcast that aims to help you elevate your online earnings. Today, I'm joined by an affiliate marketer of over 20 years. He has over 200,000 YouTube subscribers, which in, in this space is akin to Mr. Beast type levels. And he makes money and lots of it whilst he sleeps. I'm really thrilled today to introduce Mr. Miles Beckler. Miles, it's a pleasure to have you. Pleasure to be here, Jason. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Um, so just just if, if you don't mind, I'm sure most people listening will know who you are, but this might be sure. going out to a slightly different audience to, to the people that we, we maybe usually broadcast to. So for, for, the, for those people, could you just give us a, a quick intro as to yourself? Yeah. So um, the 90 second version, when I was in community college um, back in 2003, I was working a day job trying to work at the school radio station and my program director wanted me to work more. I was like, dude, I got to keep going to my job. I got to pay for my car. I got to pay for rent, everything. And he was like, let me show you how to do this little affiliate marketing thing on the side. Uh, so I made my first dollar online as an affiliate marketer on MySpace using social media back in 2003. Um, that fell apart 2009. My wife and I, <clears throat> excuse me, my wife and I co-founded a website in the meditation and spirituality space, and that's still running to this very day. And then in 2016, I began teaching everything I learned from, you know, six years of failure and then followed by six years of figuring it out and getting it right. And that became the Miles Beckler YouTube channel, which is has 200,000 subscribers um, today. Pretty much just working on Wifey's brand and my brand is pretty much where 98% of our focus is. Fantastic. And we're going to dig into a lot of that today. I, I really want to dig into your kind of what you just talked about there, really, where you began, why yeah. you started off on that journey, uh, and, and maybe look at some of the pitfalls that you you hit along the way. And I know MySpace is, is one of those potentially. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're going to dig into that. But we're going to start each podcast with the same question. And that question is, what is online success? So essentially, what does online success mean to you? It's freedom. Um, and what that means can be different things for different people. Um, time freedom for some people, the freedom to raise your children, the freedom to live life on your terms for other people is very, uh, number based, right? They have like a number in mind, 10 million exit is my freedom. Um, but whatever way you want to really round about, I think that these online businesses should support a lifestyle that you want to live. And a lot of people replace desk jobs that they don't love and commutes that they don't love with this um, ever speeding up treadmill of do more, do more, do more, more followers, more brands, more AI content sites, more, 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 more. And they get busier and busier and a lot of them are making less than they were making from the day job. And, and that's, that's just kind of atrocious to me. So it's about building audiences, email lists, building uh, sales processes and automated systems that can generate the cash flow you need to live the life of your dreams. And then uh, bugger off and go have fun, right? I spend a lot of time camping, I paddleboarding. We do a lot of road trips. I'm into overlanding. I do a lot of travel. I've traveled to 20 something countries. I'm going to hit my last, um, continent, uh, here this year on a, on an adventure we have. So it's, it's just that, that freedom. Like, what do you want to do with your life? Cause nobody, nobody came to this planet to work 70, 80 hours a week to make this money thing. That's just a construct. It's fiat. It's not real. Anyway, it's not backed by anything. They're printing more and more of it. Um, so what do you want to do with your life and then build automated systems online to fuel that with automated cash flow? Yeah, I think I'm really aligned with your your thinking there. I think probably the one thing that I need to to really build on more is that automation. And I think that's something yeah. that we can definitely discuss more today because I think that's yeah. something that you certainly, you know, you've been in this game a long time. 20 years is a, a long time yeah. in this game. Uh so obviously, you know, we, we can we can dig into a lot of that today. So I'm yeah. just interested then actually, what what do when people ask you, and invariably they will, what do you do for a living? What is the response? Because <laughs> that's always a tricky yeah. one for me. Yeah, I split test this. Um, you know, internet marketing geekery is one thing I say. Sometimes I just say I do digital advertising. 
right? And like, what does that mean? Oh, Facebook ads and, and YouTube ads, which, um, you know, if they're in the know of what we do, that's a, a gross oversimplification. Um, I've told people I've got like a YouTube channel, but when normies find out about that, then it can all of a sudden they're like, oh, can you help me with this? My sister's trying to sell knitting ball yarn <laughs> toys for cats. And I'm just like, oh, I don't I, like, that's why the YouTube channel's there. So, um, yeah, at this point we, we split tests and I, I usually say like digital creator or, or digital advertising is kind of the, the gist of it for most people. Yeah, it's a really tricky one, isn't it? I, yeah, it is. I, like, I like the phrase normies as well because we are kind of in this little cocoon, aren't we? <laughs> in this yeah. digital world, yeah. Um, and, and I don't I, mean I, that bad, right? That's not a bad thing. Uh, it's it's meant lovingly, but, but we have woken up to something, we entrepreneurs, and once you've been an entrepreneur for long enough, it's like almost difficult to go hang out with people who have day jobs and they talk about their day job problems and we've got a, just a very different set of challenges that we take on and... Um, it's really quite interesting, which is where going to events and meeting other people who are on this journey that we're on and listening to these podcasts, to be honest, it can it can help us because most people are lone warriors on their laptop late at night and they feel different. Yeah. They feel like the black sheep. They feel like outsiders. And um, we're, we're here, too. This, you're, you're, you are normal <laughs> in our world. Um, so it's, it's just kind of fun. Lovely. You know, we're, we're going to dig a lot more into that, particularly around this idea of entrepreneurship. Uh, and, and, you know, kind of the mindset that you need, and whether it's for everyone. Um, one thing I always like to do with people that have had a lot of success on YouTube is is to go back and look at the, the first few videos that people did. And I don't know, actually, if, if, if your first videos are the ones that are still on your channel. I've got them. They may well be. I don't know if you've ever curated that or, or kind of trimmed it down a little bit. But I actually no. went back to and looked like seven years ago, eight years ago, and some of your first videos. And and one of the first ones, I think, I think one of the titles on it was "Opportunity Seeker to Entrepreneur," yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. That that just that phrase, "Opportunity Seeker," is mm. that essentially what an entrepreneur is? I, I guess I guess it is. If you if you're the sort of person that is out there, because there will be people listening to this podcast who they they want to do something, but they don't know exactly what it is they want to do. They want to make money online. Yeah. They, they they want to seize an opportunity. So I, I really like that phrase, opportunity seeker. Just can you tell us a little bit more about that? And you know, was there a story yeah. behind that to you? Because I, oh. I, I I watched some of the, some of the video where you talked about being a twelve year old and, uh -huh. and and some of that. Yeah, it was really yeah. interesting. Could you so, just give um, us a little bit of a rundown on that? Yeah, I grew up in a work. I you know I grew up in a working class poor family. So like middle lower class, they rented houses. My parents didn't buy their first house until I was in my mid twenties. Um, we had love, we had food on the table, right? Um, definitely had to go to the pawn shop from time to time to get money, pay rent. So like my family didn't understand the money game. They didn't understand the wealth game at all. So at a very, very early age, I knew that I had to do something different. I needed to figure out this world of money and wealth and I, I wanted more out of life. So I started kind of falling for get rich quick schemes when I was a very young child. The first one I spent um, my allowance on this thing from the penny saver, which is these little uh, classified ads that get uh, distributed into your mailbox from the post. And it was kind of like I paid $49. I got this booklet and it said, great, photocopy the booklet. And then it, the, the pitch was make money online stuffing envelopes. $49 will teach you how. For 49 bucks, I got a little booklet and it essentially said, uh, photocopy this booklet, run the exact same ad that you ran and when people mail you money, put put the booklet in the in the envelope and send it off to them. And my dad was pissed. My dad was like, oh God, dad, you know, he was just, he was like, I told you it was gonna be wrong. He didn't want me to spend the money on it. So that was my first experience with the, um, the get rich quick get rich quick world, which I think that's what I consider an opportunity seeker. An opportunity seeker is someone who jumps around from opportunity to opportunity. And today the greedy gurus are selling a lot of what I call me to marketing schemes. You sign up and it's all, oh, we're going to teach you all the educational stuff you need to make money online. And then you have to buy their $500 level in order to resell that $500 level. And then you get commissions and then you can buy the $2,500 level where you get other trainings unlocked. But then the only thing that you do with those trainings is you sell those same trainings that you just bought. It's very MLM or network yeah. marketing ish. And I had a phase where I did network marketing. Um, I did real estate investing when the $0 down. So I've, I've done a lot of these things where it was like, okay, where's my chance to go get money from the world? Where's my chance to go get money from the world? Now I contrast that with being an entrepreneur. And I think an entrepreneur figures out a group of people, an audience, an underserved audience of people who have a common need. 
Okay, that's a market. And then we go create the things that those people are looking for, whether they know what they're looking for or not, kind of a different discussion. But ultimately, you know, we've got what, like 4 billion people on these things, their cell phones for those listeners is what I'm showing. And they're looking for help. They're looking for tutorials. They're looking for advice. They're looking for recommendations. They're looking for courses. They're looking to grow themselves personally. And so it's that, that shift from... What's the thing I can go, you know, copy paste and make money? What's my get rich quick scheme? Then that shift over to like, okay, I'm just going to go be of service to this audience of people. I'm going to help them get the outcomes that they want in this world. And when entrepreneurs embrace that and really truly create the content, the pathways, the courses, um, connect people with the courses, et cetera, et cetera. That's when you can tr create true long-term success because my MySpace thing came crashing down. And the MySpace thing was a reflection of yet another opportunity. A guy I knew had this little thing on the side. It was essentially spamming MySpace and he made money with it. And I was like, I'm in, let's do it, right? Um, and then that fell apart. And then the next scheme I came up with fell apart and the next one fell apart. And I was like, dude, I'm so tired of building things that fall apart, right? I want to build something. I want to build it once. I want to build it for the long term, And I want this thing to take care of me and my family for the rest of my life. And that mental shift really happened in 09 when we started building that uh, brand on my wife's uh, website in 2009. So that so that was really the pivotal moment then. Because I was just thinking as you were talking about that, you you potentially went through some you know not necessarily super dark, but like some tough times. I imagine yes. to get to that point. So, so what is it? What how do you keep going through through those times? What is it? Is it is there something ingrained in you, in built in you, or is it just yeah. like sheer determination and perseverance? You just it's talked about question. you know your childhood where there was you know. Yes, okay. There was there was love, but but money. That this was not something that you were used to having, right? And you know, you keep hitting these these brick walls, or or you know, you, you think you're over them, and then they fall apart. So, yeah. what makes you keep going? Um, great question. So, I, I fear, right? Fear of going broke is one of those kinds of interesting things. Uh, the fear of right now, like, and it's I wouldn't even say it's like a strong fear, but like the fear of having to go back and get a desk job. Right. I haven't had a real job since 2010. So we're 14 years in on um, living life on my terms at this point. And to lose that freedom, oof, I'll do whatever it takes to not lose that freedom. Luckily, I've got enough skills that I could just spin up any kind of services and offers at this point in time. Um, but in the early days, yeah, it, it really is. It's a combination of running away from something and running towards. I think Tony Robbins, a lot of people use the carrot versus the stick analogy, right? You can get the donkey to move by dangling a carrot in front of the donkey, which for me, that's like being able to earn enough to live without having to go to a desk job for 40 hours. But then there's the fear. I had $50,000 in student loans that I wasn't paying on. Um, the emotion of disgust was very powerful. So we were trying to travel, working on one of these Me Too marketing schemes, all in on this from Australia. And we just flat out ran out of money, had to move back in my parents at the age of 30. And that was like the last time I I was just like done with it. I was done with the gurus. And I talk a lot of smack about the gurus on my channel yeah, now because yeah. it led me to this really dark place. I call it the dark night of my soul. But out of that, the only thing that felt good in my day-to-day -day life when I was living back with my parents, trying to get a job during 09, during a rubbish economy, um, meditating for an hour a day with my wife was the only thing that felt good. I was like, maybe we could share this meditation thing with other people. And maybe other people would start to feel better if they meditated too. And then we started to think about the mom who has a full-time job and she's got three kids at home. She picks up her kids and she gets home and her life's just absolutely chaos and busy. And she, it, it's beautiful, but it's, it's, she's stressed. She's overwhelmed. What if we could help her take 15 minutes and center herself and ground herself and clear her mind and wash away the office day so she can be truly present with her children for the rest of the evening? Um, and that inspired us. So it was out of this disgust of going flat broke that it, I ain't done. And every entrepreneur, if you learn, look through their uh, story, you'll see that there's a series of failures and they try something else and fit. Like no yeah. one gets this game right the first time. Even if that's what the greedy gurus are selling you in their sales pages, they're lying to you. They're omitting the seven years of trial and error. Yes, and they're only yeah. telling you about that little six month window. And I did this one little hack with my parasite SEO and look at how much success I'm having. And it's like, yeah, but you also had like 15 years of struggle and trying other things that didn't work. Um, and then when we started sharing things at work, 
traffic started showing up, we felt better. Like it, it didn't feel like I was trying to, you know, go get three family members to get three and get three and start selling everybody essential oil. Like that felt slimy to me and sharing meditation, something that really helped us and getting feedback from people and they enjoyed it. It, it just, it created this kind of positive virtuous cycle of like, I want to do more of this. And the same thing's true with my YouTube videos. Like my early videos are terrible, right? Like literally they're, they're pretty bad. We've but, all been that. <laughs> Exactly. Everybody starts humble beginnings, right? And but I was getting comments of people like, wow, you're actually being real. Like everybody else on YouTube is just trying to yeah. sell me stuff I don't need. Like, thank you. And it that little, okay, this is this is doing something. This is helping. And the combination of feeling like I'm doing good, seeing the data start to work in my direction, feeling like I'm getting farther and farther away from the risk of ever have ever having to go back to a day job. And okay, boom, this is my path. Let's go. And um so yeah, I mean and I, I agree 100 percent i think it, it feels so much better doesn't it when you you know you you create something that provides true value to people uh, totally. and it's it's so easy to get caught up in these in these you know quick the quick wins so like you mentioned the parasite seo there and that's something yep. you know, it's, it's a quick win but it, you might make a lot of money but it doesn't necessarily feel great to do Yep. Um, whereas creating a, a, a you know a brand or a service or a product that really makes a difference to people, that makes you feel good internally too. Um, so, so, how many verticals are you in now online? Because I, I when I was doing the re I didn't realize that you had Amazon books. You've got obviously you've got yeah. a YouTube channel. You do a lot on Facebook. You're big on email. Uh, obviously, you've got your affiliate stuff, and and then the Amazon. How how you you're spinning uh, a lot of plates. <laughs> Well, right. And so like, at what point is this shiny object syndrome? And like, I want to say about the parasite stuff, like there's people making great money with parasite SEO right now, and they just know it's going to go down to zero at some point. They know yeah. it's going to disappear and they're just squeezing everything they can out of it. I kind of respect that. I just don't like starting over from zero over and over. And like shiny object syndrome is real when people are trying to be on this one journey and all of a sudden everybody's like making so much money with Reddit subreddit threads. And I'm, I'm dating this like in a year, none of this is going to be relevant. And they're going to be like, course, what are you talking yeah. about? Parasite <laughs> SEO is going to be gone. But that's it's just chasing the shiny object of the month, the fat of the month versus building something that's going to be long term. So. Okay, then to shift, then what are my wife and I doing? Well, we we think a lot of like, okay, so my wife's email list is 200 something thousand subscribers. We've we've had something like 90,000 customers into that brand buying our MP3 meditations and other things. So we think a lot about what are the other things these people are buying? And they buy artwork, they buy calendars. So we have an Etsy store where we sell print on demand artwork. We sell calendars because my wife my wife does a lot of art with her mp3 covers and people are like yo i'd love to have this on my wall and it's like well okay um amazon books my wife's got at least seven or eight books i've got three books right now two of my books are organically sitting on the top of the internet marketing um category on kindle like in the number usually in the top three spot i have two books um they're like eight thousand word books and those are actually repurposed video content like you could go find the seven figure side hustle is one of my books that does really well. It's literally an audiobook I created for a YouTube video on my channel that I just transcribed and copy edited and put out on Amazon to reach new people there. Um, we sell our own products. You know, do you consider different affiliate programs and different affiliate offers to be different channels? Cause if so, I mean, we have hundreds of channels, right? I, I have so many different affiliate channels going on, but yeah. it's, I would say that there's a core like dozen traffic and lead slash customer generation streams that we have currently divided between two separate brands. And what I'm, what I'm kind of like, it all started with one for everybody who's listening to this, like, Oh, good God. Like, I don't want to do all that. Like it started with one and it was like, okay, how can I take what I've already created and then go let that be of service to people who haven't found me yet. Well, I could take my YouTube videos that are very, very, very deep dive, and I could get someone to turn that into a Kindle book. And now I can reach people on, you know, Amazon who are searching for the same stuff that I'm teaching freely on YouTube. And now I can reach them there. And it's this concept of like syndicating or getting the most everything we can out of everything that we've got. Um, but I like to think of it as diversifying. So we commit to one audience, we want to help this audience, and then we want to grow an email list with this audience because that's traffic that we own and that we control. And then from there, it's like, okay, what are the other things they're buying? What are the other things that they want? They love our MP3s. They love um, the courses that I promote as an affiliate, but what are the other things that they're purchasing? And then how can I go meet more of my audience? Eventually, you've got 
YouTube traffic, blog traffic, Amazon traffic, Pinterest, right? You got a, a series of different traffic sources. So uh, helpful, an unhelpful content update to Google algorithm won't like crush my business, right? I'm not all in on any one traffic source. And then any one change, Amazon changes their affiliate program. I've had affiliates just stiff me. They just stop paying, right? $8,000 yeah. owed to me. They just don't pay me. Like it happens when, especially when you've done enough volume and you've, you've done enough. And so it's just diversification in my traffic sources, diversification in my cash flow and my income streams all around one brand. So I can just continue to be of service to that one audience over and over and over and over and over again is kind of the big game. So let's dive into the, the email side of things then. So yes. you just mentioned there, you've got all these different traffic sources. You've got one audience per uh, brand, I suppose. Uh, and, and ultimately, is the email the the, the, the main goal in terms of yes. funneling that, 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 uh, that attention into that email list so that ultimately you own that? And, and, and then the, I suppose the second side of that question is, how, how, how do you go, actually go about that? Is, do, you have diff, do the funnels look different for different verticals or is, yep. is it ultimately the same thing yeah and the first thing i like to focus on is simplicity right i do not like building confusing advanced funnels because that's where things break and that's where you end up having to work on it for a week no no no. i like to build stuff that i could launch in like a day an afternoon because we don't know what's going to work and what won't work so we need to do lots of testing and iteration so i take a minimum viable philosophy to all of it from there um and it really depends on where you have momentum so the first thing that everyone needs to do is figure out where their first little momentum is going to be. Where are they going to go meet their audience? My wife focused on blogging and that was back in 2009. Okay. And we dealt with the hummingbird update, all the updates that people think they're getting slapped around with yeah. now, boy, you should have been around in 29, 2010, 2011. I mean, businesses were destroyed. So this ain't new what's going on Google, but she was all in on blogging. So we use pop-ups. Literally just, just, yeah. Hey, do you want a free thing? Right. You want a free MP3? You want a free, we did a free call. We did a free MP3. We've done free eBooks and just throw, I like thrive themes. Thrive themes has a pop-up that lets me do a B testing. And you know, at our peak, we were getting a couple of million visits per month to that website. And that's a lot of testing. You can get a lot of data yeah. on what people yeah. are actually interested in by just showing them the pop-up, um, the miles Beckler brand. I tried to force myself to write and a blog because that's I saw my wife be so successful blogging. I'm like, okay, I have to do that too, right? Model those who have created success before you. But I didn't like writing back then. And I wasn't very good at writing. And it took me a very long time to craft messages in the written word. Today, I'm quite good at it and I enjoy it. But back then, I was trying to force myself to do something that wasn't in alignment with my personal DNA. So when I turned on my cell phone camera and I started to just share ideas on YouTube, I was like, oh, finally, it's kind of, it kind of feels fun and easy. I feel awkward. I don't love my output. I know that I could be way better than what I'm putting out, but like I got the idea out and I feel like I did the idea justice and I was able to do it again and again and again. So generally I recommend people figure out what their first main core content strategy is to grow their audience. And then how do I get people from wherever I'm meeting them there onto an email list is kind of a function of where you're already meeting your audience at. Some people just go straight into Pinterest. Some people go into Instagram. If you're doing, if you're crushing it with Instagram reels, that link in bio is going to be like the most important thing in your world. You got one sentence and one link. And when I see people put these link trees that have 38 links on them. No direct <laughs> response marketing. Do you want the free resources going to help you accomplish this? Click below and get them straight to a landing page, straight to an opt-in page. In my YouTube videos, I have to actually call people to action. So I use pretty links to make really short URLs. So I've got like an affiliate marketing crash course and it teaches my 11 step process, how I grew a niche site that I'm not an expert in. And people can go get it at milesbeckler.com slash free. So I actually have to do that bit that I just did here. And thank you for allowing me to kind of throw that bit out there, but I have to do that. I speak that out in my videos at moments when it's relevant to actually get people to leave YouTube, to go to a landing page that I build with, um, either thrive architect or lead pages, and then to opt in from there, my Kindle books. Um, if you buy the seven figure side hustle, book, each one of my Kindle books has something that is like an upgrade, like a content upgrade to get them to go opt in. So I got my books are all 99 cents. They sit on top because I have high sales volume. And I'm essentially just trying to get Amazon customers because when they buy my book on Amazon, they're Amazon's customers. That's not my customer. I need to get them on my list somehow. So I give away the audiobook for free. 
which is actually on YouTube, right? So we just, we find ways and mechanisms to bring people from wherever we're starting to grow that audience into our ecosystem. And generally with my wife's brand, we did really well after the opt-in, the next page, we started promoting a low ticket product, $7, $17, $27 offer on the following page. It's called a one-time offer. And that's about the basics of a sales funnel tack on a little bump offer and a one click upsell and you you have everything that you need that that's literally like our million dollar sales funnel that's done over a million bucks a year for for three four years running now at this point that's incredible and thank you so much for sharing that because there's you've just essentially <laughs> distilled a lot of your business uh strategy into uh, you know 90 seconds um and i suppose that that actually leads me on to what i was just going to bring up you, you you just mentioned the the, the low ticket uh sales page so you, you put a, a tweet out recently, um, and I think the tweet said this, desirable desirable low-ticket offers with top-notch sales copy is like a cheat code. Yep. And that, essentially, that's what you're talking about there, isn't it? 100%. Right. And so for, for multiple reasons. Uh, the first reason is the concept of a lifetime value of a customer. Okay. So if someone in my wife's brand, I know what that lifetime value is for our customers. It doesn't matter if the first purchase is a dollar seven dollars eleven dollars or a hundred dollars there's going to be an average lifetime value for every customer so once you know that you have this kind of like higher end lifetime value of a customer go get all the customers that you can yeah. well, how can you bring in customers really quick make a really really big deal at a really really low price and it just becomes this no-brainer for people They're like oh okay cool everyone is super comfortable checking out on their phone yeah. most shopping cart systems have like you know, we got Apple Pay integrated. Like, like you don't have, people aren't sitting there typing in their credit card anymore. Like those days are gone, right? The the mm. friction of mobile e-commerce has changed. So if you've got a great five dollar or seven dollar product that really helps people get somewhere, bingo. So now you can really turn on this customer generation system. And if you've got a sales process, a follow up process, multiple offers to sell them over time, you've got yourself an entire business right then and there. The other side of what it is, is for like the creator side. So anyone who's ever tried to, oh, I'm gonna create a course on this, okay, and we make this, it's gonna be everything, Miles is gonna make the make money online course, I'm gonna teach everybody everything about making money online, and all of a sudden it's 84 modules, and I'm gonna have to record 632 lessons, and it's gonna be 19 hours of content, and Miles doesn't finish the product. And it never sees the light of day, because I get, I drown in the messy middle, instead of, I'm gonna, so one of my low ticket products, it's also one of my books on Amazon, um, it's called Niche Navigator. It's a 90 minute training, might be two hours, I think I think it's 90 minutes. The video course is nine bucks. And as you know, like one of the biggest challenges people drag on for years in our space is what's my niche? Who am I gonna be of service yeah. to? So I'm solving one very specific problem for one person who really has this burning desire to join us on the path of creating a business, but they're stuck at this, like they're stuck in the starting gates. Well, here's a $9 course that will help you really unlock the ideas. I teach the big five uh, niches and how to sub niche down to find your exact niche. You can learn everything you need to learn about finding a highly profitable niche in one hour or less guaranteed, or I'll give you your money back. It's just nine bucks. Now that offer for somebody who's been dragging around this question of what's my niche for two years, that's a no brainer offer. And then to kind of circle back to what we said, I had a copy editor, I transcribed my VA transcribed with Descript, everything I said in that video, I sent it over to my copy editor, someone off of Upwork, and then it went over to a book designer. And so you can get the book on Amazon for 99 cents, same content same basic ideas. Again, I'm just thinking, how do I get the most out, the most reach out of everything that I'm creating? And a lot of people who they know their niche, they're like, Miles, I want to scale my traffic. I want to scale my list. I want to scale my, my membership program. They see that offer and they're not, they're not offended by that. Oh, I can't believe Miles is selling something. How dare, you know, they're like, oh, okay, good, cool. He's got something out for that. That's not for me. They just pass right by it. But for those people who are like, losing sleep and they're, they're, they've been struggling with this question. It's so on the head of that. And it took me like eight hours of total work from brainstorming it all the way to getting some graphics made on five. Like maybe it was about eight hours of work to put that whole thing together, little sales letter. And I think it's brought in, I mean, I mean, hundreds, if not thousands of customers for me at this point in time. And it's like, okay, so there's some lifetime value 
of each one of these customers. I don't have a back end built out on that brand because it's not like my main focus, but um, now I get to play those games too. And it, it's helping me diversify my income, my customer sources, my email list grows and on and on. Love it. Love it. Um, I, I love the fact that you talk about keeping everything so simple. I think that's such a mm. valuable lesson mm -hmm. that anyone listening to this, because it it is, for, particularly for someone just starting out, this space can feel so overwhelming. And, yeah. you know, you, you like you said, you talked about all these different verticals that you're in. Um, and I suppose now it's at a point where they do all complement each other because, you know, you've mm -hmm. got this content, you can repurpose it, you can put it out into different places in as, as simple a way as possible. Um, but for someone just starting out, I suppose the, the, the message would be to master one of those to begin with. Yes. Would, would that yes. be advice? Yeah. 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 And yeah. I, I am a, an ex-professional overcomplicator, right? I, I began by making everything 10 times harder than it needed to be. And it's, it's interesting that there is a process because, so when I first learned WordPress, right, for years, I, I was, I tried to figure out how to do a drop shipping data feed site using, um, uh, Dreamweaver back in 2003 ish. And like, oh, torture mate, just yeah. torturous. Right. And then I learned WordPress and I'm like, oh, I can make a website about <laughs> anything. And then you just get these random ideas like, oh, I'll make a website about that. And like today with AI book publishing, I feel sorry for people because every idea you have, you can spin up a thousand yeah. posts. Oh my gosh. And then all, then you got to manage all these plugins and then you got to manage, and then your server load and all this stuff, SQL injections and sites are getting, oh, good Lord. So I've found after spending a lot of time doing all of that, the 80 20 rule is absolutely real. And yeah. every year I look back what worked, what didn't, where am I just sitting here spinning a plate, running on a treadmill full speed, and I get nothing in return for it. So for me, letting go of my blog as a mechanism is something I've done fairly recently for my personal brand. And it's mainly because people are just stealing my content. Everybody's using Ahrefs. They're going and finding my sitemap. They're finding all my keywords. They're just stealing my content and they're rewriting it and they're competing against me. And I'm like, okay, you guys can have that. Come, come meet me on Amazon, right? There's a higher bar. And now that I'm saying this, this is the first time we've talked about this everywhere publicly. I'm going to get people who are going to rip off my content and compete with me on Amazon, but I'm just going to keep moving the bar. Now I got my office hours product, yeah. right? Now I got all these other things. And so it's kind of a game of cat and mouse, but taking some time to look around and say, okay, I'm putting out all this life energy to build a business. What's working? What's not working? What's just a harebrained idea that my ego came up with and really learning how to just stay focused in on being of service to one audience. That's the key. Cause if you help people, did you ever read a, a blog post, the uh, thousand true fans by Kevin Kelly? No, I haven't. No. Ah, so this is old school. The, he, he was like the original editor of Wired Magazine back when Wired Magazine was cool in like the 90s. Please find it and please add it to the show notes for folks. I will. It's a must read. And the gist of it is that if you get a thousand people who truly, truly are your fans, it's pretty easy to sell them a hundred dollars something per year. And with a thousand true fans at a hundred bucks a year, you can make a hundred grand a year. Now in our inflation age, do you need a little bit more than that? Maybe, but also with the reach we have with cell phones, he wrote that pre iPhone, yeah. right? So the reach we have to have a thousand true fans isn't actually that large of a hurdle at this point in time. But it's this concept of my wife has this group of people who who give her their attention, they trust her, they know her, they like her. I have this group of people who know, like and trust me, we have a lot of overlap, I have a lot of spiritual business builders, because they've seen what my wife and I have done. And I do teach a lot of philosophy that comes from like core spiritual uh, truths, from how to do marketing from kind of a spiritual standpoint without talking about it that way. But if we just go continue to be of service to these audiences and help them navigate the confusing, overwhelming waters that are filled with greedy guru sharks trying to get thousands of dollars a clip out of their pockets, if I really just go stay focused on helping those people get where they want to go, I'm good. It's an old Zig Ziglar quote. You can have anything you want in this world if you help enough other people get what they want. So then everything can start to run through this filter of, is this actually in my audience's best interest? If not, get it out of there. So my harebrained idea to make a snowboarding website because I like snowboarding and I could get a tax deduction on all my snowboarding stuff. Does that help either of my audiences? No, it's a totally new thing. Eh, done. It's done. And there was a day when I didn't have 
the wherewithal or the discipline to not take action on that. I still own snowboardbums.com. I think it's a great domain. Can't get rid of that one. But I've let go of over a thousand domains in my career. I've, at one point, I had over a thousand domains that I, that I had registered um, because I had all these ideas. Because once you get that Midas touch, you're like, I can make a website about everything. It's like, oh, I could do this and I could do that. I could do this. And the core, then the one little thing that's actually bringing in leads and customers gets neglected because of all the other shiny objects. And people get overwhelmed and then they have to go get a day job and then they disappear. And the counter to that is my wife and I haven't worked real jobs for over 14 years. I'll never work another real job again in my life. Um, I, I live a lifestyle that is absolutely a freedom, right? Back to that original thing. How do I create more freedom? It's not more brands. It's not more websites. It's actually, it's really getting better at helping my audience get what they want, which is content that grows the audience and emails and, and products and offers. And I suppose that is the curse, isn't it, of the the entrepreneurial mind? Is that you always there's always something popping in that you know you'll you'll be going to sleep and you go, oh, I could do this, and oh, I could do that. There's always uh -huh. something, and it, it is it is it's always a skill, isn't it? I suppose it comes with experience, knowing when to listen to that voice and when not to. Uh, but you sound well, like I, can I good can I go one more one more step yeah. deep on this for people? So you get brain chemistry from it too. And there, there's a wonderful book, um, Habits of a Happy Brain. And so when you come up with a new idea, that's dopamine, right? Like our brain is a chemist and the brain actually starts squirting dopamine. And then you go register the domain. There's a rush, dude. It's literally like you, you feel your biochemistry shifts. And so people get addicted to the rush and a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs like to build things to 80%, but we don't finish it. Like that course I was saying, oh, then 800 modules and we don't actually finish it because we get this rush of brain chemistry. It physically alters our state of being through a chemical composition that's created from the hypothalamus in the brain. Oh, so then we need to learn how to get dopamine and to get these positive brain chemistry from other areas, which is why I spend a lot of time camping, hiking, playing outside, paddleboarding, um, a lot of physical activities that give me dopamine. I build that into my daily routine. So I don't, I'm not sitting at a computer all day feeling like the, the dopamine's going down. So now I got to go get a dopamine rush. I I've built that in, in another way to give my brain what it needs. So I don't need to go buy domains to get that dopamine anymore. Um, habits of a happy brain goes into that deeply and I highly recommend anybody who feels addicted to that next venture go through that book and then figure out how to get your brain chemistry that you need as a human uh how to how to get that in other ways that are going to make you more physically fit that are going to help you get closer with your friends and family these other things that we entrepreneurs sometimes neglect that are really important long term I sorry for interrupting had that, i just no, wanted no, to i literally had that exact experience today in the sense that you know it's been Christmas break and New Year, and I'm not quite back in my usual routine. Um, so this morning, I thought, right, got to get to the gym, got to get to the gym. Went to the gym, came out, and felt the best I have felt in the last yep. seven days. <laughs> and yep. it was just from a little bit of exercise. I mean, you know, I'm not saying I'm not exercised for that. Time. You know, I play, I played a, a, a game of paddle yesterday. Same feeling, but yep. it, yeah, it's building that in, and that does lead me on to the next question, actually, which was talking about you do seem like you've got a really good balance at the moment in your life you know obviously you've you've worked hard to get to that point do you feel that someone just starting out is is it possible to have that balance as a as a someone new to entrepreneurship um or is it because when i started it was literally it was grind 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 yeah. and i was working a full-time job as a, a senior member of staff in the school and it was it was really hard to yeah. do both and i had I, I you know in terms of certainly physical fitness probably mental health they definitely went by the wayside because i was also you know had a young family that i'm trying to also spend time with right is it possible to to, to find that balance do you think i mean you've probably gone through a similar so, process yeah of imagine. i have to say just for the sake of hope that it's possible yeah. Now, it wasn't for me. So I was definitely on the 80 hour week, grinded out because, you know, I mean, my wife and I went flat broke. We were living at my parents, 1100 square foot. That made, that's like a, 
1100 square feet is probably like a hundred square meters, like a tiny little house with my dad who was retired. And like, it was a very difficult period. So we were like sun up to sundown. I'm up at 4 AM and I ain't done typing, publishing, doing SEO keyword research until 10, 11 o'clock at night, every day, seven days a week. I worked weekends. I did not go to barbecues. I did not go to birthday parties. I did not go to happy hours. I sacrificed everything. Could someone do it another way? Of course, I'm sure someone could. I, I didn't know another way other than brute force. I'm going to publish more content than anyone ever. So when I started my YouTube channel, I did a 120 videos in 120 consecutive days. Every single day, I did a long Surreal. form video. These aren't shorts, right? These were 30, 40 minute, hour long videos, deep dive tutorials every single day for four months straight. I crossed the Pacific Ocean three times. I had a speaking gig in Asia, then I went down to Australia, and then I went like jet like just brutal travel experience. I, I didn't miss a freaking publishing date because I wanted it that bad. And when you really look into the truth of the past, and if you read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, that definiteness of purpose and that relentlessness of a pursuit is required. Now, with that said, if someone's been working at their local gym, and they've been helping locals in their local gym lose weight and they have experience and they have testimony and they bring this like ability to help people get results to the table. Could that person create a lead magnet, a little membership site coaching program thing and start running some Facebook ads and grow a thing on? Absolutely. No doubt about it. You can be strategic, but this requires you to learn or be good at copywriting. And if you aren't good at copywriting already, you better be ready to write an hour a day of copy every day for you know six months plus to get really good at writing copy. And then you gotta have some money to put into the, the black box that is Facebook ads, right? To get your reach if you're not willing to put in the time to do a video every day or a video every other day or to do that monumental work of uh, building something. So the way I like to think of it is, it's this concept of escape velocity. And I did a video on this on my YouTube channel. And like, so rockets, have to achieve escape velocity, right? So this is a, a, a static, heavy thing pointing up and the amount of energy that is required to get that thing 100 meters off the ground is insane. And then to get that thing up to low orbit, it's an insane amount of energy. But there's a point that if you push hard enough if you create enough value, if you create enough momentum, then you reach escape velocity and the amount of energy it requires for that rocket to make it to Mars is actually very low. Patience, you need a lot of time to get there, but you're no longer like running the, the throttle, the, the boosters as aggressively as they are. So there was a period for my wife, for myself, it sounds like you went through that. I think a lot of people have it, that there's this monumental amount of energy required. Another idea, if, if that's too abstract, is like a freight train. It takes a lot of diesel and a lot of energy to get that freight train up to 60 miles per hour when it's towing 600 cars of coal. But once it's going, it doesn't take all that much energy to keep it going at 60 miles per hour. So I'm, I'm in a blessed position now to be with all this momentum. I created my own wave of momentum through content publishing. And now I'm strategically riding that wave of momentum in a way that's long-term vision. Make sure I don't ever have to go get a job. And I'm now reinvesting a lot of my digital cash flow into physical real estate, into rental real estate, into other things to, again, further diversify myself to make sure that I can kind of ride this wave of momentum from that period of work that was intense um, forever. And this is why I kind of have a bit against the greedy gurus because every human being has this thing inside their brain. We want something for nothing. We kind of know get rich quick doesn't work, but we kind of want it to be true at the same time. <laughs> and the greedy guru sales letters all pry upon that little mechanism inside of the brain, making it sound like you can get something for nothing, you can get rich quick, but then you get in the middle of it and it's either not true, it's falsified, it's just blatantly wrong. They're selling an outdated method that used to work that doesn't work anymore. And, and eventually when people buy enough of those things, they kind of hit this point of like, ah, Jesus, I guess I'm just going to have to do the work. Yeah. The sooner you get to that, like, oh God, I guess I'm just going to have to do the work point and do the work, then you can ride the wave of momentum. And people want to ride the wave of momentum. They see the lifestyle I live. They see the the freedom that I've achieved. And this is why I've, I've never wanted to build a guru course. And I want to keep being very truthful of like, this is a three to five year plan and you're going to work your ass off to build that momentum. But once yeah. you do, once you do, the freedom 
that you unlock in your life is unlike anything that any of your friends or family have ever known. Um, and it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing and it's totally worth it, but it's difficult. And, um, how do people get over that, that hump? It's, it's very different and unique for everyone. For my wife and I, it was really committing to an audience and going all in on them. And then for me showing up on video number 96, that I didn't want to do, but I was committed to doing 120 days. I thought of my audience. I thought of those people in the comments. I thought of them. And if I don't show up, if I quit, if I give up, they're going to see, they're going to think they have permission to give up. That's why I still make videos to this very day is because yeah. I'm on a podcast and I'm telling people you have to do the work. If I'm not making videos anymore, I'm one of those guys who says one thing and does another. So I keep showing up because my actions speak a lot louder than my words do. And I need them to have congruence in that messaging to show people. And yeah, I'm only doing one video a week now where I used to do seven videos a week. I publish videos on Christmas. I publish videos <laughs> on Thanksgiving insane. because it just had to get done because I had to shift my mindset. I didn't think I was a creator and, and a million and one little things. But the, the big idea is you have to achieve escape velocity. Um, and can you can you remember the point where you when you when you achieve that? Because you know you've got eight hundred and forty five and probably videos. more now videos. Yeah. What do you know the point when you got to that? Yeah, or, um, or you did. It, yeah, it was it was probably about a year in. So I did about two hundred fifty videos in my first year, and my subscriber rate was doubling every month. So it went. It was very slow. After 120 days, I only had 450 subscribers. And most people look at that and they're like, ah, oh, this stuff doesn't work. But I knew the power of compounding. And so I kept going and then, then it went 450 and then it went 1500 and then it went 4,500 and like the tripling happened. Um, but it was when my email list was 3,500 subscribers. I ran a promotion and I made 30 grand with a list that was only 3,500 subscribers. Yeah. And when I had that, YouTube didn't own me. I wasn't, I wasn't, there was no algorithm out there that controlled my destiny. And I had that 30 grand in a week come in. And I was like, bingo, we got it. And ultimately we had achieved that with my wife's brand many years earlier. Um, but it was, it was more personal when it was a hundred percent, all my stuff. And that's why I'm such a proponent of building email lists because that's where your true thousand true fans live and no one can sever your communication. Nobody can cut you off from your email list. It's, um, it's uncensorable. In a sense, and, and and you do have a super strong personal brand now. Um, do you, Thank you. Is that this? Is that the same with 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 you know a a, a brand that's more of a corporate brand? Do you think is that would would you approach it in the same? Obviously, there's going to be certain things that are going to be different, but the, yeah. essentially the process is the same. You ultimately still want to bring in those emails. Totally. And and I think yeah. if you're running a corporate brand, I think the CEO or the COO, there needs to be a face of that brand, right? Every brand has some sort of a face. Um, large corporations often hire other people to be the faces of the brand, right? Through advertising, kind of old school style. But like people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Yeah. And if you ain't got somebody who's on the front of your business that people can know, like, and trust, then oof, you're missing one of the key components of primal branding of the core of everything. Yeah. Um, so I, I really do think personal brands are the way to go, especially now as we get into more and more AI, right? And more AI content and chat GPT is everywhere. People are going to continue to yearn to connect with real people who have real experiences, right? Chat GPT can give you all of the knowledge that we covered here, right? But when you hear it through my stories, animated through a real human, through this real person to person conversation, it's deeper, it's, it's more real. And that's true in the quilting niche. That's true, in, you know, all the weird sub, the, the woodworking yeah. niche, right? Like it, it's true in all of the spaces. And I think that as we move forward, more and more people are going to want to connect with those kinds of people in, in their spaces. And I think that personal brands are amazing. It's worth noting my wife, um, her main website's under a brand name still. She didn't even put her picture on that website for like three or four years. So, and now she's slowly changing to where it was brand name. Now it's kind of like brand name with Melanie. And then it's like, yeah. now it's like, she's reversing back to personal brand and everything's working better in the brand. So like if someone's not confident and they've got that kind of like imposter syndrome and they're like, dude, I just want to hide behind a brand name and publish great. Cause you're going to learn, you're going to become the expert when you publish 400 blog posts on woodworking for example. So if yeah. you're not a woodworking expert and you want to get there, 
woodworkinghacks.net, go for it type thing, ah, get a .com, but you get what I'm saying, right? Publish your heart out and that's how you, it's through the research and the act of creating the content that you become the expert. And at some point you can be like, oh, I'm, I'm ready to like, I'm ready to, you know, take off the uh, suit and show off my little Superman costume and really stand in that authenticity. And anyone who has expertise, just go be you, just go share you, right? We're all quirky, we're weird. I talk, I probably talk a little bit too much smack about the greedy gurus. Um, I go on these weird rants from time to time, but like my thousand true fans love that stuff. They get off on it and it turns some people off and some people don't like how fast I talk and uh, it's okay. There's a million different creators who teach the same thing I'm teaching. People are gonna go find their right people. I'm just gonna be that true, honest, authentic version of me. I like camping. I want to go out in nature. I'm not a Lambo bro. You might see me flexing in front of my like camper, my four by four camper van <laughs> yeah. camping in the middle of nowhere. And there's a core group of people who are like, God, that's what I want. And there's people who want the the Lambos and the mansions too. There, there's a, you know, an audience for every style, but as you bring your style out, you kind of really start to, to create your own little uh, bucket, your own little world. And your audience will know you like you and trust you more. Absolutely. I suppose knowing that or what that audience is, is half of the battle. So you, you talked a lot earlier on about you, you pitch everything towards your audience. So yep. do you create almost a, an avatar or, or yes. that type of thing? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got on, on my YouTube channel, it, it used to be a paid course, my customer avatar course with the worksheets and everything, but it was something that I thought was so valuable. I ended up putting it on YouTube for free. So if someone searches Miles Beckler or customer avatar, you'll find the video. And the more you really understand who they are, what their life's about. So earlier, kind of in passing, almost I mentioned on my wife's brand, the busy mom who she worked all day, she commuted, then she got to take the kids to dance class. Then she got to get home and make, and she's so bit like, like we know that about her and i understand the chaos that is her life the kids are running around mom i'm hungry and she's just like dude i need 10 minutes to myself and she might actually go hide out in the bathroom for 10 minutes just to get like a breather so when i give her a tool right so i know that about her so when i give her a tool that is an mp3 that she could put in and press play and 10 minutes 15 we got five minute versions we, we make all kinds because like she might be really busy and i understand her life. So I create things that are able to fit into her life. And I use messaging that help her understand that I understand where she's at and that this is going to help her have natural energy. It's not another cup of coffee that you're going to have a crash from. It's not Adderall. So you could be, it's literally, this is 100% natural divine energy that you can fill yourself up with and it depletes. So bingo, she's just like, ah, oh, and then she has that experience with it and it clicks and we move to a new echelon in her mind of creators who are out there because we just get her so well, which is true with me kind of ragging on the greedy gurus a lot. Cause so many people in our space and you know, it, they, they get, they get took. They get scammed, yeah, course, yeah. thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, one nine nine seven. You know that's two thousand pounds. That's real money. You could buy like a beater car, uh, maybe not anymore, but you used to be able to buy a beater Honda for two thousand bucks. And so when they realize that there's this other echelon of people who are anti that, that means I must be about something. Okay, I'm going to give this guy the time of day because he gets me on the greedy guru. I am fed up with those guys who lie because somehow lying became normalized in marketing. And they get walked across the click funnel stage. Do you know how many people, this is a random data point. Do you know how many people are in jail or have been sued by the federal trade commission who got walked across the two comma club stage at a click funnels event? It's a noteworthy number of people. They're getting arrested <laughs> for lying. They're, they're getting sued by the federal trade commission, which is the U S um, is a government body who oversees advertising. And so they're celebrated in certain circles. Like, oh, they made eight figures, but they were scamming people. Yeah. And they're now in jail and they wow. were literally paraded across the stage. And so this is the whole, like when people sense that there's something weird going on, they hear me go on these rants about it. They're like, oh, okay, breath of fresh air. There's something different here. I might be able to trust this guy. They don't fully trust me yet. Like, uh, maybe he's yeah. just saying what needs to be said right now, but then they go find my 843 videos and then they go watch my customer avatar video. And they're like, Jesus, dude, this guy, like, and then they go find my affiliate, mar how to do affiliate marketing zero to hero video. And, and they're like, oh my God, like this guy is different. Bingo. I'm now up here and everyone else who's copying me is down here. 
and mm-hmm. everyone's got a there, there's a lot of work to to join me yeah. in that upper echelon and you know hat tip to you jason and you know niche site lady on twitter like there are there are a lot of people who have integrity and who have honesty they're in our space but there's just so much damn noise and the greedy yeah. gurus run the ads because they have a two thousand dollar product and most people don't realize why they have a two thousand dollar product. It takes them seventeen hundred and ninety dollars in ad spend to make one sale, and they're yeah. actually making like a hundred or one hundred twenty five bucks per sale because their advertising is that bad. If they sold low ticket products and had a way higher conversion rate, they could be in a better. But there's, this is their whole guru game, and when people have that aha moment, they're like ah, and then they find the honest, ethical groups. Then they believe that it's actually true. They get on the path and. You know, hopefully we can convince them to stick with it long enough to achieve escape velocity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've I've met so many people in the last twelve months, particularly because I've I've started attending more offline events, and and, and that's exactly what they say. You know, it's the yeah. it's the authenticity that people really buy into, um, yeah. and 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 that kind of again leads me to the next question that I was just going to ask you: Do you do you do much offline? Because you do a hell of a lot online. Do you? Yeah. And go out and meet people, whether, whether that's with your personal brand or or um, with with your wife's more kind of corporate brand. Yeah. So on on my brand, yes. Uh, wifey's brand, not so much. We go to some like psychic fairs just to see what people are uh, selling and to see if I can find yeah. affiliate vendors. And like, ooh, that's a cool crystal wand. Do you have an affiliate program? Yeah. So I do like business development in person. Mm-hmm. That's how you can find offers that no one else finds. Um, pre the great lockdown or whatever the hell we all just lived through. Um, I was full-time speaking on stages all over the world. I've spoken on stages at conferences in Asia, in Europe, um, Central America. I've run some high-end mastermind events. I was I was pretty much always at events. Since everything shifted, I haven't kind of got back on that machine yeah. yet. I highly recommend that people get to real events. I don't love the ultra big affiliate marketing summit events. I like, I mean, you're in the UK, you guys got some great stuff like Brighton SEO, the smaller events that are kind of niche down towards skill and topical base. And then, you know, when you meet people and they're dealing with the same stuff you're dealing with, you, you don't feel like yeah. a lone warrior yeah. it, that nobody understands. You're like, holy crap, there's a whole group of us and you can share stories and it just, it can create this kind of like renewed energy to go back in the trenches and to keep with it long enough, um, and it, it makes it more real. But um, it, it will it will get turned on again soon. I got a couple of fun trips that I'm planning. I'm going to go see the pyramids, and um, we got some really big stuff. And I'm going to go to uh, uh, the Kumbh Mela in um, India, which is like a giant, like 40 million spiritual gurus and, and like like uh, uh, brahmachari all get together. It's like Burning Man, but for real spiritualistic in the Hindu. So I've got some fun personal growth trips planned, but. Um, I do look forward to getting back on stage and getting some events again. Absolutely. And I think this is, I think that's a really valuable lesson to, for people to take away because this is called the online performance podcast, but that doesn't mean you need to live your entire life online. You know, there's still yeah. a real world out there that you do need to interact with. Um, there's yeah. so many things I, I still want to kind of dig into with you. Um, we're getting so much value from you here. So just give sure. more questions. Um, sure. So th- the next one, I suppose, we're looking at, potential mistakes that you've made um over mm. the years and uh, is there is there one that stands out i know we, we talked briefly yeah. about the myspace thing and being oh, yeah, over-reliant that's it. on that as a platform 100%. is that the one <laughs> yeah well and so it wasn't just over reliance on that platform it was not growing an email list so what i was doing is i was direct linking people from myspace over to affiliate offers cpa offers it was working um and then myspace got sold and they had an algorithm change and they just completely banned all my links and they shut down all my accounts because I kept trying to post the links that were banned. So then they they shut down all my accounts. And so my income literally went to zero like overnight. And, you know, building a business, which I don't know if that was actually a business, right? It was kind of a side hustle. It was in that that um, opportunity seeker realm. But But having one point of failure to where my business could get completely eliminated by the decisions of someone else was the biggest mistake at all. And then the solution to that is grow an email list. Because had I been growing an email list, instead of linking them directly to the offer, if I would have linked them to a landing page, got them to opt in, and then showed the offer on the following page, which is very, very simple and easy to set up and doesn't add, it wouldn't have like hurt my performance. But the day that they turned off all of my links, I could have continued to email a list. I could have continued to figure out okay, what other things do these people buy? I could have continued to promote that one offer, go find other offers and on and on and on and on. So it literally took me back to zero 
and may going back to zero is tough yeah. right and i think it's something that everyone has to do um but then when we started building my wife's site it was like okay we got a little tiny bit of momentum on traffic grow the email list google's gonna turn us off something's gonna happen grow the list grow the list grow the list and and that has kind of been why i have that beacon the other mistake i think is in the early days i didn't want to make mistakes right the thinking i had to be perfect everything had to be right and perfect and done the, right and so it limited me from actually taking action and the truth looking back as someone who's achieved wild success um we, we probably brought in like eight million revenue in our business that we just literally from laptops all over the world at this point but like looking back it's actually through all of those mistakes that i learned what worked right it's the iteration process so it's like the proverbial throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks and like if you're not throwing enough stuff at the wall you're never going to see what sticks and a lot of people are hesitating to take action because they they're you know it's like that that philosophy of imperfect action is actually the path there so that was a big limiting belief for me and when i started the miles beckler youtube channel and i committed to 120 videos in 120 days miles didn't have time or yeah. bandwidth or ability to be like, oh, this one's not good enough. Let me redo it. Nope, I got another one to do tomorrow. It's done. <laughs> it's up. I have to go. And I literally broke that mechanism inside of myself by just forcing myself to publish over and over and over and over and over again. And then my first sales pages sucked. My first opt-in page got like a 16% conversion rate, whereas my new one, um, it's like 65% conversion rate. People want the 65% conversion rate, but you get there by putting out the, the rubbish one first rubbish a little bit less rubbish a little bit rest oh this is almost good now it's you know and it's that that iteration cycle is kind of the other side of the coin i think so what's the that, that's fascinating and i think there's so much to be learned from that what what so what's the is there an end game to miles beckler is there a, um, a point where because obviously personal brand is very difficult to kind of exit from i suppose although it oh, is yeah. possible but i want no exits but yeah you don't want exits. No, no. And and I think this is worth, I, I think I'm kind of like a unique person on this. So let's say I sold the Miles Becker brand for like 3 million or 5 million or something like that. Um, so first of all, I got a giant tax bill that I have to figure out. Yeah. yeah now I have this big nest egg. So, so let's say that's a, um, if it was 3 million, 30%, that's $900,000 goes to the government. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, thanks. I'd rather not do that. So then, then that brings me down to 2.1 mil. Okay. So now I got $2.1 million and I, I have no more cash flow. So now, like, basket, eggs, oh, yes. fuck, sorry for the F-bomb, but seriously, like, I'm supposed to, you can't live off $2.1 million for the rest of your life, right? I, I'm, I'm planning on being on this planet for a very long, so now I have to, like, learn how to make my money make money for me, and the, the risk of doing something stupid and losing it goes up drastically, or... Okay, so now I'm going to get a bunch of rental and now I'm like starting a real estate investment business and I'm brand new in that world or like, oh, I'm going to be a crypto trader. Yeah, okay. I'm going to lose all my money. It's like, so then I have to learn all new things or I just keep emailing my list a few times a week, make a video a week. So like I'm in the end game, right? This is, this is my end game. Yeah. It's health. It's well-being. It's it's sharing the gospel, right? It's like, it's trying to bring the the truth of the right way to do it. I mean, on a great week, like I can bugger off for like three weeks at a time and maybe email my list from inside of my camper van a couple times a week. And my business still does 30 grand a week, 40, 20, 50. I, I don't even know. I, it all goes into this giant pool of more than I need. So it's, I guess, a way of saying it is I value cash flow. I like cash to continue to flow to me all of the time. So more books more videos, more podcast interviews, trying to really just help that next generation. I've got data, um, you know, I'm a hosting affiliate, I'm an affiliate for lead pages. So I've helped over 60,000 people start websites, sales funnels, wow. 60,000 human beings Same. have actually taken action, right? And that's that's actually like, like hosting sales data. Um, and you know how much sales, like that's really good commissions, right? This is why I make millions of dollars. But yeah. it's like just getting better at helping people to help that next generation. Um, if you think about the hero's journey, the, the last steps in the hero's journey is to come back with the elixir and to help that next generation on their hero's journey, speaking it the right way. Um, so books, speaking on stages, uh, you know, getting to meet you, shake hands, go go to some cool events in the UK. Um, hopefully when the sun shines, can somebody do an event in like September in the UK so we can like get good weather instead of spring? <laughs> 
Yeah, you definitely know, don't do winter. <laughs> the sun right, shine for about three weeks here. <laughs> right, and, and that's you know I bought a second home for in the southwest of the U.S. because I was up in a very rural area that had a lot of winter and clouds, and that freedom to be able to be like, oh, I'm done up here. I'm going to yeah. buy a you know million yeah. dollar place down in the southwest to have sunshine. And so I've got all the freedoms in that sense, but it really is about helping the next generation. And since I'm not. You know, I'm not a ClickFunnels affiliate. I don't drink their Kool-Aid. I don't have to try to tell everybody that, you know, you need this fancy funnel software. You don't need fancy funnel software. Use Thrivecart and AWeber. That's it. Go, right? The Thrivecart, Thrive Themes, AWeber. Do every so I get to kind of be this mildly rebellious voice in in the mix um and, and help bring what I consider to be the truth out. And that just sounds fun. And um, what else are you gonna do? And then so the other last point is Tony Heesh. Uh, the guy who built Am uh, Zappos and he sold it to Amazon. Um, he died like last year or the year before. And I don't know if it was a suicide or a drug overdose. The dude sold a, he built up the billion dollar, billion dollar exit, billion. And if you study billionaires, there's a lot of people for some reason, oh, I'm going to be a billionaire, future billionaire in the making. Go look at the data around billionaires. Mm -hmm. Like it's not positive. The divorce rate is higher than average. Like there's all these challenges that come. And so money solves money problems really well but um i want to camp travel see the world i'm going to hit all i want to paddleboard i've got you know i need a paddleboard africa and then i paddleboard at every continent except antarctica and adventure like this this world we are on this rock this marble of blue that we're it is astounding and you know i can bring this business with my laptop to i can go back to asia again i love bali yeah. indonesia uh thailand you know start to throw events maybe sounds like work i'll just Go speak at other yeah. people's events, <laughs> you know. Absolutely, I, it's, it's actually really interesting. You're the second. I think I've done six of these interviews so far, and you're the second person, sadly, that has mentioned death uh, amongst mm. that question of the end game. Yeah. So I think there's something to be said for that for sure. Um, and we've seen it. Like I've had, I've lost family members, uh, like in the last few years. And when I go out to my extended circle of my friends, family members, and my family members' friends. I, there's there are a lot of people who are not on this planet who were and and a lot of it's happened yeah. very suddenly um i got a big wake-up call from a mentor so this guy he made a million dollars a year starting in 03. he and i used to sit on calls for two three hours a day twice a week during lockdowns and he he was just a mentor i did a video series with him on my channel called um digital oil wells he made a million bucks a year every year since 03. That, that that was when i made my first dollar and <laughs> he died in two weeks and he was heavy set. He he got the thing that was going around and he was gone. And that hit me of like, man, this is precious. Like we got to enjoy it. Um, you need cash flow for it. But then there's a point, like there's a lot of people chasing more, 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 more. And this concept of enough, how much is enough? And when I measure enough through cash flow, right? Is $8 million in a bank enough? I don't know. That scares me to have 8 million bucks in a bank. Banks have been failing this year. But if I've got... 40 grand a month cash flow. I mean, we do over a hundred. So like, even if it came down by over half, like, like I'm, I'm good. My, my numbers, my lifestyle costs a lot less than that. My van's yeah. paid off and bingo. If the cash flow works, you can go live and enjoy and be healthy and, and spend time with friends and family. And, and that's the part that, um, enriches a life and enriches the soul, which maybe we get to bring that soul enrichment with us because you ain't bringing the money with you. Absolutely. Like Amen to that. Last question then, final question. Uh, yep. Is everyone, is if you were to give uh, just one tip to someone to be successful in the online arena, what would it be? Get really good at helping other people get what they want. And it's awkward because most people, when they're new, they're like, I know what I want. I want 10 grand a month. I want, I want. and everybody's focused on themselves. Mm. And it's the most counterintuitive thing in the world. But when you shift that around, be like, what does she want? That mom who's super busy, right? What does she want? She wants to feel peace. She wants to feel loved. She wants to feel supported. If I can help her get that, whew, wow, power. So it's it's part customer avatar. It's part just philosophy, business philosophy. Um, but when you get really good at helping people get what they want, 
And then, you know, I think uh, persuasion, basics of copywriting, um, you got to communicate it effectively. But when you just really get good at helping people what they want, um, everything opens up from there. And too many people are focused on themselves and what they don't want or how I got to get money. That's the opportunity seeker, right? I was trying to get money. I was trying to get money. And then I flipped it to like, how can I give value to this group of people? How can I help these folks over here? And when you make that shift and then stick with it long enough, I, I, I never thought like I thought 10 grand a month was a big number. I never thought I'd be doing hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars a month. Like it just blows my mind still to this day. And it's been going on for years now. And I'm still like, really? Like, okay, another <laughs> one. It still works. You know, I spend all week out in nature camping, doing this at the other and I come back and it just, it just works. Um, and it's because the content I've published, the email opt-ins that I've published, the follow-up sequence I've published, the offers they promote that are all published. It all works. I got videos from 2016, 2017, 2018. The algorithm still shows it. People still watch it. They're like, this guy's different. They go get the free crash course. They go through that. It's got some affiliate. I'm making hosting sales all automated yeah. over time. And um, brick by brick, I built it. Um, but when you build it for the long term to really be an automated system of content that helps other people get results that they value, you, you can't help but win eventually with that philosophy. And persistence. Awesome. Miles, thank you so much for coming on today. I think yeah. so many lessons that people can take away from that. It's it's probably been one of my favorite. Well, it's definitely been one of my favorites so far. And I sure. probably shouldn't say that, but I will. <laughs> oh, I um, it. Where well, can people you find know, you? I mean, I, I'm guessing we yep. can just Google you and, and totally milesbeckler.com, right? Where, where do you yep. tend to hang out? Milesbeckler.com is the place. Yeah, um, on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, if you want to chat, if you want to say thanks, get get at me on Twitter, X. Um, obviously, just search Miles Beckler. That's my YouTube channel. Everything's under my name, my author page. Uh, if you want to help, you can get all three of my books on Amazon for $2.97 for all three. Um, but buying a book and, and leaving me a review on that helps me game that algorithm. And I appreciate your help on gaming algorithms because that's a part of what we do in this game. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miles. It's been an absolute pleasure. Cheers.